How Mrs. Claus Saved Christmas by Phyllis McGinley Illustrated by Gayo Fujikawa Published by Family Circle Magazine, December 1961 Everybody knows how Santa Claus looks. You've seen his picture in your picture books. You've heard about his house with the North Pole near, and his sack, and his sleigh, and his eight reindeer. But did you ever before in your life know Santa had a wife? Well, he has. She's the reason he doesn't get thinner. For she serves his breakfast, she cooks his dinner, she warms his slippers and dries his boots, and mends the fur on his Santa Claus suits. <clears throat> and what is she like? By best report, she's a cozy, rosy, grandmotherly sort with a dimple in her cheek, a twinkle in her eye, and a smell of vanilla and hot mince pie. But the nicest thing that I've heard about her is Santa couldn't get along without her. For it may be Santa Claus who makes toys for all the children in the world. It may be Santa Claus who drives his sleigh through the winter sky and climbs down waiting chimneys. But it's Mrs. Claus who gives him his good ideas. Santa, she'll tell him in mid November. There's a brand new boy at the Smith's, remember? He ought to have something that's just his size, say a nice blue rattle, the color of his eyes. And Haverford Jones now, don't forget, he's pining for a grown-up chemistry set. His parents pretend that it can't be done, but I like Haverford, bring him one. She knows when children in the state of Maine are ready for their first electric train. Or she'll say briskly, on earth, I hear, dresses for ladies are short this year. So don't you think that the fashion calls for shorter dresses on little girls' dolls? And Santa hymns and Santa hauls, but he usually listens to Mrs. Claus, except just once when they couldn't agree. And this is the story as it came to me. <clears throat> It was Christmas Eve at the end of the day. The reindeer nickered as they champed their hay. Elbows flying, the reindeer groom polished up the harness in the big storeroom, while Santa, weary from the wear and tear, lounged by the fire in his easy chair. I think, he murmured with pardonable pride, everything is ready for my midnight ride. Everything's jolly as it's always been. The sleigh stands waiting with gifts crammed in, tricycles, bicycles, duck truck toys, and cowboy outfits for a million boys, jump ropes, jack stones, dolls with curls, and sets of dishes for a million girls, books for the bookish who sit and read, baseball mitts for the baseball breed, kites for the tomboy or balls to pitch, practical presents for the not-so-rich, candy for the sweet tooth, Chess for the clever, it's just as it's been forever and ever. I do think Christmas will be fine this year. Don't you agree with that, my dear? Mrs. Claus was washing up the dishes and stacking them in the china closet. She wiped her hands on her apron, turned around to Santa, and looked at him over her spectacles. And then she said firmly, No. Santa was so surprised, he nearly fell out of his chair into the fire. No, she said in the clearest of voices. I'm tired of our same old, tame old choices. Maybe you'll consider that my plans are strange, but just one Christmas, let's have a change. Change? asked Santa in a startled way. Said she, I thought of it just today. We don't want the helpers to overhear. So come a little closer, I'll whisper in your ear. Up on her toes went Mrs. C, and buzz, 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 like a honeybee, buzz, 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 like a bee in clover, she whispered her secret over and over. But Santa Claus's look got blacker and blacker. His breath came puff, like a red firecracker. His whiskers wiggled, his lips drew down, and he put on his terrible Santa Claus frown. Then stop, he thundered, not one word more. 
and he stepped from his chair to the bedroom door. Me change Christmas? Why, what a question. It gives me sneezes and indigestion, a pain in my shoulder, a rash, a cough. Oh, I must have a nap to sleep it off. It's hours till midnight by the clock on the shelf. Let nobody wake me. I'll wake myself. And he went indignantly into his room, muttering, I never heard of such nonsense. The door shut behind him, and Mrs. Claus heard the bed creak as he threw himself upon it. She finished sweeping up the kitchen and then sat calmly down with her crochet. The clock ticked on and on and on. Soon it was twelve o'clock and Santa hadn't stirred. At ten past twelve, the reindeer groom phoned Mrs. Claus from the big storeroom. Please tell Santa the reindeer wait while children dream in their beds. He's late. Already the stars are a silver warning. Doesn't he know it's Christmas morning? Tap. She tapped on the bedroom door. Tap, 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 and one tap more. But poor, tired Santa, worn to a splinter, slept like a bear holed up for winter, slept like a porcupine curled in a queue. What was a wife to do? She put down her needle. She wound her thread. She gave one toss of her merry head. Then half to herself said, This may shake him, but didn't he tell me I shouldn't wake him? I have the addresses, and I know the way, and somebody has to drive that sleigh. On went a muffler about her throat. On went the big red fur-trimmed coat. Though it seemed a giant's size too wide, she belted it round her a pillow inside. On went the big boots, on went the cap. She picked up gloves and the Christmas map and rummaged in a cupboard till she found therein a false set of whiskers to fasten on her chin. Till you couldn't have told with a casual stare that it wasn't Santa Claus standing there. And maybe the reindeer sensed the change and maybe the groom may have thought it strange that never a word passed Santa's lip as he climbed in the sleigh and cracked the whip. But long before they could ask or pause, into the air flew Mrs. Claus. Dawn was coloring the sky when Santa woke. He rubbed his eyes, looked at his watch and leaped from bed as if he had been stung by a hive of hornets. I've missed Christmas! I've missed the ride, he shouted, and he began to ring every bell in the place. Elves and gnomes came running from all parts of the house, half-dressed, half-asleep, and very frightened indeed. They could not understand what, was, what he was shouting about. By the stars and the dipper, by the Milky Way, who let me sleep till Christmas Day? A thousand years and never a miss. But how can children forgive me this? I'm ruined. I'm finished. And all because they'll give up depending on old Santa Claus. But sir, said the groom, it can't be so. I waved goodbye to you hours ago. With the deer and the sleigh and the gift crammed pack. And there you are now, sir, coming back. His mouth fell open with a foolish grin as the reindeer team came jingling in, and a gay little sparrow, though twice as stout, a little red figure climbed stiffly out. Oh, I must admit, they were hard on me, all those chimneys, said Mrs. C. The saint was taken by such surprise he could merely mumble and blink his eyes. Then he roared so loud that the roof got quivering. You mean to say that you made delivery? You drove my reindeer? You steered the sleigh? Then heaven help children on earth today. Now, Santa, Mrs. Claus said quietly, wait till I get this big old coat off and I'll explain. And she pulled him down into his chair. After all, you told me most particularly that I wasn't to wake you up. you've asked me, I must confess it's an odd sort of Christmas, more or less. I wasn't quite sure how you had things fixed up. 
and maybe I got the addresses mixed up. If somehow, Santa, she said and smiled, I did have a present for every child. Skis for the bookworms, books to read on rainy Sundays for the baseball breed, for girls who had nothing but dolls on hand, nice red dump trucks for dumping sand. Nice, nice soft pandas, huggable and fat, for little boys waiting for a cowboy hat. Useless presents, extravagant and funny, for children with never a cent of money. Practical presents for those more rich, for studious fellows, balls to pitch. Ribbons for tomboy boys, jacks for their brothers, electric trains for fathers and mothers. Chess for the sweet tooth, candy for the clever. It's not what it's been forever and ever, but I did bring a rattle just his size for that boy at the Smith's with the new blue eyes. And I promise you one thing I didn't forget, Haverford Jones's chemistry set. <clears throat> oh, alas, moaned Santa, hands to his face. I'll never recover from this disgrace. Glance at the earth, you're sure to see children crying by the Christmas tree. Children sobbing till they wet their sleeve for gifts expected they didn't receive. Listen, you hear them? And leagues around, up from the world, came a curious sound. A sound like a surge of waves on a shore. First a ripple, and then a roar. Till the North Pole trembled, both fore and after. But it wasn't weeping. It was children's laughter. Giggles and gales and peals of mirth from startled children around the earth. Gusts of merriment, cheers, applause, and a chorus of thank you, Santa Claus, for bringing last night through the dark and cold the wish of our hearts we had never told. Santa stared at Mrs. Claus for a long, long time without a word. Suddenly he began to laugh, too. He laughed so hard that she had to tap him on the back for fear he would choke. He laughed so loud that he sent snow sliding down the window panes. When he could speak once more, he said stoutly, Merry Christmas! And Mrs. Claw said, Merry Christmas back. By the wild north wind, he chuckled then, I can take a joke with the best of men. We needed a change or I'm a dunce. All right, my dear, we've had it. Once. But after this, leave the ride to me. I'll be delighted, said Mrs. C. And they and the helpers sat down to a breakfast of bacon and eggs and sausages and fried chicken and hot cakes and maple syrup and two kinds of rolls and marmalade and currant jelly and plum pudding. But Miss, Mrs. Claus was so tired out from chimney climbing that Santa had to get supper that night for himself.